DMCA, a terrifying four-letter acronym that strikes fear into the hearts of content creators on the internet. It seems like whenever a DMCA takedown strikes, the internet goes into a panic. The latest example of this was when popular YouTuber PewDiePie uttered a racist slur during a live stream. This pushed Firewatch developer Campo Santo to issue takedowns and remove his videos featuring the studio's game. To some, a DMCA may seem like the simple removal of a piece of content, but to creators, it's something much more impactful. There's no question that what PewDiePie did was indefensible. However, Campo Santo's actions have caused quite the stir, even pushing some to flood Firewatch with negative reviews on Steam. All of this leaves me with multiple questions. Was Campo Santo in its right to do what it did? What exactly does the DMCA mean to a YouTuber? Does this mean a company could take advantage of it in more nefarious ways? I asked video game attorney Ryan Morrison to explain some of this to me, and he says that what Campo Santo did was completely legal. Though that doesn't necessarily mean he agrees with it. Well, so what what Camposanto did is entirely legal, even though not everyone likes that, including myself. I don't think the law is right or or caught up to date with technology, but. It's the law. Right now, any developer can shut down any Let's Player very easily, unless that Let's Player has a formal, non-revocable license. And even in that instance, what PewDiePie said would trigger most, even non-revocable licenses, to be revoked. There's usually a morality clause attached to it. So even in that case, he'd probably be screwed here. But generally, throughout the internet of Let's Play videos, that entire industry is legally infringing right now. Would I argue fair use for it? Absolutely. Would I be the first lawyer to sign up if, if, if a Let's Play video was taken down over something like this? Absolutely. But the way the law is sitting right now, it's, it's difficult to say to any client who comes to me about this, anything other than yes, as a Let's Player, you are infringing and you need permission from the developer to stream their game. Speaking of permission, many have noted that Firewatch's website says that you're allowed to stream the game and monetize the videos. However, Morrison pointed out to me that because it doesn't say anything about the license, it defaults to being revocable, and so Campo Santo was able to revoke PewDiePie's license. Now, I won't argue against Campo Santo's reasons for removing the content. However, let's say there's a Let's Player whose opinion of a game is less than positive. A rogue developer could legally have those videos taken down, thanks to the DMCA, with little recourse available to the content creator. And if a developer wished to take further advantage of the system and issue several notices to a single YouTuber, it could put that person at risk of having their channel shut down. Professional Let's Player Ryan Latorno, better known as Northern Lion, let me in on exactly what happens when these notices are issued, and just how serious it is. So the way that it works on the YouTube side is that the first uh, DMCA, they're, they're called copyright or content strikes, so the first copyright strike that you get via DMCA comes with punishments like temporarily you are disabled from monetization and you have to go through uh, a program that they've set up called Copyright School, where they teach you all about what you can and cannot use on YouTube. And then if you get more of those, there's like extreme punitive damages that, that you could face, like being restricted from uploading over a certain videos over a certain length or, you know, maybe permanently disabled monetization all the way through to like channel closure. But the, the problem right now is that there's really only allow everything or issue DMCAs. There's no in-between. And the DMCA is catastrophic for a YouTube channel, basically. So because there's no middle ground right now, it's all or nothing. And, and that's why I think that a lot of YouTubers were made anxious by this situation is because the, the DMCA is really uh, like quite a damaging thing. And, and if it's abused or uh, used too frequently, it could potentially destroy somebody's career over something that I think most people would probably feel like your career should not be destroyed over in the sense that you're playing somebody else's video game. Thankfully for him, Northern Lion has never received a takedown notice. His most popular content focuses largely on games like Binding of Isaac, XCOM, and PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds. These types of games are different every time you play them, which Northern Lion says allows for videos that make the viewers want to play the game themselves. Of course, that's not always the case with Let's Plays. Story-focused games like That Dragon Cancer were said to have lost sales because of videos that showed the whole game, though it is worth pointing out some people may have never heard of it without those Let's Plays. This is where some developers ask people to hold off on streaming the entire experience. Of course, there are some studios that are totally okay with full playthroughs, Campo Santo being one of them. 
These developer conditions aren't always the same for every game and video, much like fair use. Morrison told me that PewDiePie could take his Firewatch situation to court and argue that his videos are in fact fair use. But even if he succeeded, it wouldn't spell victory for all Let's Players. Fair use is determined on a case-by-case -case basis, and legal fees aren't cheap. Not every YouTuber can afford to go to court over a video, and even if they could, the legal process could take years before anything is resolved. Morrison, however, believes he has a better solution. Nothing is fair use until a judge or jury says it is. And just be, even if this went to court and he got a pass and, and the judge said, Felix, this is fair use, good job. That would mean that this instance was fair use, not that let's play videos are fair use. Uh, there is no line like that. You have each, each instance is gonna have to be examined. And what I think we should do instead as an industry is work on proper licensing and proper policing within our own industry. Uh, we see that in video games, the ESRB, the guys who put the ratings on those video games. That was done by a private group of video game professionals who decided we're going to regulate ourselves so the government doesn't come in and regulate us for us. So what I think we need to see happen is a, is a private group here that comes out with a, a, a bunch of regulations for streamers and uh, devs can sign up to have their game through that. And then they can't just revoke a license like this if they're part of that alliance or group or whatever you want to call it. The early 90s saw the government going after video games for violence and inappropriate content, most notably in games like Mortal Kombat and Night Trap. Political hearings were held, and executives from Sega and Nintendo argued over who was handling content like this properly. Sega had its own rating system, while Nintendo chose to censor and bar certain content from appearing on its consoles. Sadly, the government didn't think either method was sufficient, so it threatened to regulate video games itself. That's when a bunch of publishers, including Sega and Nintendo, joined together and formed the ESRB, which allows users to be informed of what type of content a video game holds, in addition to permitting publishers and developers to make games without government meddling. A similar approach is what Morrison believes would work best for creators, developers, and publishers when it comes to streaming and videos on YouTube. But why would publishers join a middleman organization? Well, Morrison explained to me how such an operation could work. Companies would join, put its games on a safe list, and agree to certain regulations. This could allow Let's Players the freedom to express their opinion freely without fear of takedowns, but it could also mean that publishers and developers wouldn't have to deal with legal headaches or streamers' inappropriate actions. Another benefit for studios is that they wouldn't be the ones taking videos down, which could very well lead to a decrease in harassment on social media and review bombing. Of course, this isn't actually happening at the moment, and as far as we know, there are no plans to create such an organization. This is simply just one idea for a problem that desperately needs a solution. There's no doubt that the DMCA is important. It protects the rights of copyright holders and ensures that their properties aren't stolen or used illegally. However, it shouldn't be used for shutdowns that are motivated by non-legal issues. It's crucial that Let's Players, critics, and journalists are allowed to speak their mind free from the fear of being shut down by a tool that is meant for copyright violations. And that, above all, is why fixing this problem is so important.